guide us in the direction. It's everywhere. Isn't it everywhere? It's everywhere. You know what I mean? But you know, I, I read in, in the book of Matthew, in chapter 6, that they said, but first, but seek ye the kingdom of God first, and his righteousness, and all these things we added unto you, focus on God and his kingdom. Focus on God and his kingdom. I said, focus on God and his kingdom. Too many people are focused on so many other things. In fact, in Hebrews it says, Therefore let us be grateful for receiving the kingdom of God that cannot be shaken. We have received the kingdom that cannot be shaken. And thus let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe. Acceptable worship with reverence and awe. You know why? Because our God is a consuming fire. I said our God is a consuming fire. Our God is a consuming fire. So we have to offer Him. Accept Praise. We need to focus on the Lord God Almighty. In fact, the sermon today is focus and pray. Fire. Focus and fire. Yeah. Because I'm telling you right now, the whole world, and even in the Christian churches, you know, the divorce rate's the same. Uh, the suicide rate's the same. Everything is the same. Everything that they're focusing on, the people of the church is focusing on that same life. And I don't understand it. It makes no sense to me when you're out here and you've got so much things here for you that God is so much for and all we got to do is put our focus on Him. That we, that we, can, we can achieve and, and grow and, and, and just be man of all the things that God has for us. But instead, what's happening? It all has crept in. Huh? And our focus is taken straight off of Jesus. The next thing you know, sad things happen. And we don't understand why. This world has a lot to offer, you know? And most of it's not good. Some folks, they have a lot to offer. Most of it's not good. Well, if you turn over uh, to uh, Matthew uh, uh, chapter 14, I'm going to read this. It's uh, starting verse 22. Immediately Jesus made his disciples uh, get into the boat and, and go ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. He just fed about 4,000 people and he's been doing a lot of work there. And after he dismissed them, that he went into the mountain by himself to pray. So Jesus is on his knees, amen, and the disciples are in the boat. Later at night, he was all alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from the land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out, and so it was still dark, and to, to them walking on the lake or on the water. When the disciples saw them walking on the lake or the water, they were terrified. Oh my goodness, how can this be? Something is out there. I don't know, has anybody here ever been out in the middle of the ocean at nighttime? I haven't. But I'll tell you what, it's eerie. It's very quiet still when you don't see it, nothing. There's, you see the stars all of them. It, in the calm of the night, right before the night, it is just plain here. And there comes Jesus walking. So they were terrified. It's a ghost, they cried out, out of fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Amen. Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. It's I. It's I'm Jesus. Lord, it is you, be replied. Tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said, come. And Peter got out of the boat, walked through the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, and, and he was afraid, and the beginning to sink, it sink, and cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus reached out his hand and called him. You have little faith. He said, why don't you doubt? Why don't you doubt? See, that Jesus, and Peter, when he, when he got out of the boat, and he, and he seen that thing that he thought that he was afraid of, terrified of, uh, he said, oh my goodness, there it is right there. I don't know what's going to happen, but I don't know what it is. Oh my goodness, it's a ghost. And Jesus said, whoa, no, it is I. I don't know your glory to God. And so Peter, he said, well, then it is you. If it is you, Jesus, call to me and I'll come to you. Then Peter put his eyes upon Jesus. He put his focus on Jesus. And when he had his focus on Jesus, what did he do? He stepped out of that boat, didn't he? When he had his focus on Jesus, he stepped out of that boat. And he started walking upon that water. Oh my goodness, what are you saying? Brother? Are you saying that we can have the same ability, the same thing? Yeah, if you have the right focus, there's nothing you can't do in the name of Jesus. If you have the right focus, if your focus is upon God Almighty, you? and keeping that focus away from all this stuff. See, a lot of people focus on all kinds of things, don't they? Don't they really? I mean, they, 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 they're focusing... On all this stuff. Why he was focusing on them, he was secure, he was safe, and he was walking on the water. Wasn't nothing going to sink him, wasn't nothing going to shake him, wasn't nothing going to mess him up because he was focused on Jesus and walking on that water. The, the physics of this world, the things where you think that can never happen, can happen. Amen. And they were happening to Peter right then, walking on that water. Can you imagine that? I didn't think he could go, but here it is. Here it is. And I'm standing out of that, I'm sinking. But the problem with that is, 
Is there a lot of believers think? They're focused on their 401ks or retirement plans. They're focused on Hollywood, the next greatest thing. They're focused on the next thing they can put in their mouth, they can wear on their bodies. They're focused on all kinds of stuff. A lot of people are focused on their wives and their children too much, but they should be focused on Jesus for their wives and their children. Did you get that? Did you get that? That's right. They should be focused on Jesus for their wives and their children, but they're they're focused on their wives and their children instead of on Jesus. That never works. I'm going to let you know that absolutely don't work. But they're focused on all kinds of things, aren't they? Huh? So they, here it is, they go up here and they focus on the cash and the retirement and all the stuff and all the things that Hollywood has to offer and they have a lot of stuff. There. And most of them we can't say. In fact, you know what x rated is in our heart? Or is it now PG-13? PG-13 out of PG. And I don't know what you use, do you? <laughs> but it's unbelievable. The nasty filth the stuff they put out there. You know, they, they'll, they'll put one show in there and be breaking one and they'll put one word in there. Then they'll, say, then they'll put a little word. Then next one, put two words in there. Next one, then if your kids go see it, you go see it before you know it, you're speaking it. And then you watch your arm. Still focus on Jesus. Still focus on Jesus. And then what do you do? You start sinking. And you start sinking. And you're holding your Jesus and still got his hand up saying, Hey, I want to catch you. Look at me. Stop looking at that junk. Look at me. I want to catch you. His hand's reached out from any of you. In fact, I can get you. You can get out of your habits. You can get out of your stuff. You can get it. Man, you can be set free from all the things that hold him behind you. He is ready and willing to get you and pull you up out of that. So you can walk on whatever it is that has a hold on you. You believe that? You don't focus on Jesus. You're focused on other stuff. We as believers don't start focusing on him. What do we do? What do we do? Another dollar? Another Hollywood star? Turns out, oh, that's the best Hollywood song in the world. She's wonderful. She, she sits there, she sings wonderful songs. She says all kinds of wonderful stuff. Yeah. And look at her. She's in the bar. Look at all the kids that run to her. They love her. Her name is Hannah Montana. How about that? Disney, you know, Disney. I, I, I don't know if anybody's ever come out of that stuff that was one of them great and wonderful for 10 years. That's all it actually is. It's a big <laughs> then they start sharing their true steps. I don't have to do it. Oh, Lord Jesus, help us. Jesus is still. Anybody here singing? Huh? You turn over your Bible all the way over to chapter 9 over here. Yeah? Oh, my goodness. Look at here. Uh, chapter 9, uh, verse 18. While he was uh, saying, uh, uh, saying this in the synagogue, the leader came in the death of him. He said, my daughter has it, it, just died. In other words, my daughter is dead, Jesus. But come and put your hands upon her, and she will live. Huh? Verse 9, chapter 18. Jesus got and went with him, and so did his disciples. Just then a woman who had a subject of, of bleeding for 12 years came up behind him and touched the edge of his coat, the hem of his garment. She said to herself, huh? If I can only touch his coat, if I can, I'll be healed. Jesus turned and saw her. Take heart, my daughter. He said, your faith has healed you. And the woman was healed at that very moment. She had her focus on Jesus. Do you know in the Jewish tradition, if you had a subject of bleeding that you were unclean, that you couldn't be around other people? Did y'all know that? You weren't supposed to be around anybody else. In fact, they put you out in a place where you're no longer seen, heard of, or messed with. In fact, you're mostly despised. In fact, I'm going to tell you. There's a lot of people out there who are messed up right now. They're only clean. And the rest of the world, even Christians are pulling mud drops on them. They shouldn't be doing it. Should, like Bobby said, should be loving them. And should, should be concerned about them, respecting them. But not participating with them. Let me say that. Because I promise you, if you, if you know, the world today is so messed up. It thinks it's got to be like the world in order to bring Christ to a lost and dying world. I'm going to tell you, that's a heresy and a fallacy out of the pits of hell. You can't go out here and mess yourself and act like them and do like them and ride on yourself and peace yourself and goof yourself and dress yourself and think that you're going to bring glory to God because somebody will open that door and you look just like them. Ooh, I better quit right there. It's horrible. I have no wrong way, nothing wrong with makeup, I'm looking good and all that. I think we're all dressed neat and nice and clean and all that stuff. But don't go looking like them things in Hollywood. What do you do? God forbid if you're Christians and you're in the church, they'll throw rocks at you. That's for sure. Worldliness is what towards God. Anybody know? Worldliness is towards God is what? Enmity, which is warfare, right? In other words, you're in a battle. A battle, you're not going to win. So why are you getting in a battle? 
It only makes sense to go to battle and never win, does it? <laughs> it only makes sense, does it? Why would you do that? No. Decide to fix ahead. Another program, another thing. Let's be like the world. We get the world and you're going to be okay. No, you won't. I'm not riding that with this. I'm right here. Born again. God loves you. Believe it. Says five billion. God can pour down five billion dollars and build whatever it is you want to build. Uh, and you can have five fifty thousand people in a church and, and not give you a dime. Huh? In that church? I'll never forget one time we preached in a church in a large church in, in the, here in Shelby County, one of the largest black denominations. And I preached the Lord Jesus, talked about it after the fact for me to live to this Christ and die. Hey, that was the subject matter we preached on that day. And they took an offering and stuff. And for Africa, and I said, well, praise God. You know, and I, I don't I don't fuss or cry. But there were already some people murmuring. You know, the preacher come up, he's embarrassed, he said, well, what you do? He said, you know, we got this building, we got that going up, we got this going up. But here you go. And it was like hundred bucks. And that's fine. I praise God for it. You know what I mean? But he was talking about a few hundred thousand people. You know, and that's okay. You know, I don't tell people I'm doing God furnishes everything, amen. In fact, I don't ask for nothing. I don't care. You know, God's been good to me. I'm not rich by any means, but hey, I'm rich. Hey, y'all yeah, yeah. looking for cash? Good luck. <laughs> I'm rich. <laughs> well, yeah, but I, then I go to those church and like 12 or 13 little old members. Little old great and little old great and like me. Yeah. Yeah. And well, I sing, we sing some songs. We have good time. We praise the Lord Jesus. And man, we get 12 to 1,000. And they pour it the no, their hearts out for missions. They gave three times what they Thousands. Yeah. But hey, another church is going after people like crazy. They're giving. Because I have. I can people like crazy. So they're giving people. They got them. So. They want to take them. You ain't preaching Jesus, what are you doing? That's for sure. But the other lady was. There she was. She spent all her money, all her stuff, everything she had. Gone. And she was still suffering. And she was still messed up. But you know what? Her focus never on getting it. Because there was no Jesus there before this, right? Then Jesus shows up, and then she puts her eyes upon Jesus, and here's a crowd, here's a big crowd, they're all pressed around, but she just stresses on. She don't even see that in other people, I bet you. I bet she says, you know, i got to get there. i got to get there. I gotta, I'm heading to Jesus, because I know that's where my healing is. I'm going to Jesus. And listen here, I know I'm not supposed to be in this crowd. I know that y'all think I'm horrible and messed up and goofed up, but you know what? I'm going to Jesus. My focus is on Jesus. And he went there, and she nothing stopped her, and she got there, and she touched him. And what happened? Woo! Heal! Praise God! Jesus is a healer. And all you got to do is put your faith in He says, daughter, your faith, she did that for herself. Is there anything wrong with you going to Jesus for yourself? No! In fact, most Christians mess up and pray for everybody else. Start praying for yourself. Oh, it works! <laughs> You know what? She had to wait 12 years, brother. 12 years. Do you believe that? 12 years she had to wait. She found Jesus in 12 years, right? You know how long we have to wait? We ain't got to wait 12 years, do we? He's here now. We ain't got to wait 12 minutes. We ain't got to wait 12 seconds, do we? No, we put our focus on Jesus. He's here right now. I don't have to wait 12 years to get healed. No, Jesus is here. Praise the Lord Jesus. I put my focus on Jesus. No doubt about it. You know, it is, it is amazing what God will do when you get your focus on Him. Take up all the stuff in this world. That's a fact. In fact, if you just turn it, if you buy a little one to chapter 8, let me read this for you. Chapter 8, uh, uh, verse starting verse 5. When Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him asking him, Help! Lord, he said, my servant dies, he, he's home paralyzed, and he's suffering terribly. Jesus said to him, Shall I come with you to heal him? The centurion said, Lord, uh, do not, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. For, my, for myself, I have a man under authority, uh, with soldiers under me. I tell one to go, he goes. I tell one uh, to come, and he comes. I say to this servant, do this, and he does it. So I know how this stuff works, Lord. I know exactly how this stuff works. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed. Now, anybody here not to amaze Jesus? What will amaze Jesus? You know what makes Jesus? I want to amaze him. I want him to be able to tell him and say, man, look at that butch. He said, well, I told him to say, he did what it's worth, whether he paid the consequences or not. Praise God. Amen. I want to amaze Jesus. That's for sure. So he did that, right? And he comes out here, and, uh, and he, he said, well, he was amazed. 
And he, he, he said, I tell you the truth, I have not found anyone in it with such great faith. I say unto you that many will come from the east and from the west and take their places at the feast of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the subject of the kingdom, listen to that, that's people in the church at this time, will be thrown outside in the darkness where they'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said to the century, Go, it will be done as you have believed. It would. And the servants will heal that very moment. Wow. That is amazing. Huh. So, so if, if I've got a relative that's sick and messed up, pain, suffering, or I've got, I've got a situation, financial, or whatever, or even, even a little sin in my life, or even somebody else that's got sin in my life, who's not saved, bound by stuff, I can go to Jesus for that person. I can focus on Jesus for that person. Is that right? Is that true? Yeah. Wow. Focus on fire. Focusing on Jesus. Focusing on the things God has for your own love, your own flesh and blood. But they'd be saved, they'd be. You know, there's no sense to be focused on the daughter trying to get mad, focusing on some kind of rehab system, or focusing on some kind of other thing he's going to do the job. Focusing on getting the car, focusing on getting the job, focusing on getting him in church. I'm going to focus on Jesus, Father. Focus on Jesus. See, focus in faith. See, her faith in the right? See, to have faith is one thing. To have focus faith is another. Isn't it? When I'm focusing my faith on Jesus so that people can be healed and delivered, I put my focus on the Lord Jesus. So I don't put my focus on their problems. I don't put my focus on their stuff. I don't put their focus on their situation. I focus on the Lord Jesus. And I focus with my faith even for myself. See, there's one thing to have faith, to focus faith. Ooh, my goodness. But a lot of people say, I believe A, B, C, and D. I say, well, God bless you. Huh? Get through Jesus, amen. Get to focusing on Jesus and exercise that faith in the name of Jesus. I'm telling you what, there's some things that can sound happen in this world. I don't care what anybody says, I've seen them. And I'm not no miracle hawker. There's a lot of them out there. Oh, there's a miracle hawker. I'm going to tell you what, you know what some churches do? They, they focus on their traditions. Oh, well, we do this at this time. We do that at that time. And then we do this and we do that. And we got this and we got that one. That's what we do. Because we got these traditions and we got to keep our traditions. I said, well, where's the Lord Jesus? Well, I'm sure he's in your tradition somewhere. You know, oh, we got the music. We got the music. We got the music. Let's all focus on the music. We just get a good praise team of good stuff. And there's nothing wrong with good music. I like music myself. But I'm just focusing on the music. And I'll read the music and I'll be okay. If I got a praise team, focus on Jesus, get rid of it. Oh, yeah. I don't care how good the music is. <laughs> Focus on Jesus, right? I see a lot of Pentecostals. They focus on the Lord God of the Bible. Oh, 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 focus, 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 focus. I focus on miracles. Focus on Jesus. Yeah. Next thing you know, I've been to a lot of places. I mean, I never forget one time, this lady, and I preached in a, in a garage and trailer, and uh, she screamed so loud that Sue took off running. Woo! She was fast. I mean, didn't you remember? Didn't you see what that? Everybody was scared. Boom! And God, God told me to go touch her. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't want to do that. You ever told God that something like that? I don't do that. No. <laughs> I don't want to do that. He said, Butch, man, they had four guys on this little girl about 15, 16. He said, Go lay your hands on her. And I did. I did. And then he told me to take my hands, put her on her head, open her eyes, because she had her clothes. I did. As soon as I opened them out, she started crying. I started praying and said, I said, In the name of Jesus, you whatever it is, I don't know what y'all Come out in the name of Jesus. You know, the Lord Jesus is here. He put up with you. Get out in the name of Jesus. Now, a lot of people don't believe in demonic possession and all that stuff. They believe in the oppression. They think everything the devil is oppression. The devil oppression. Yeah, he didn't do that. That's for sure. But the truth of it is, there's still things that, that, that we don't understand. I don't. And uh, I'll be honest with you. I'm not a Pentecostal crazy man. Man, I love the Lord Jesus. Amen. I don't even believe in all that junk. Be honest with you. But that's that, just me. But anyway, and they say, "Oh, right, she started crying." Man, she put her arm around him. God said, "Pick her up this time. Break the ground." What does that mean? Now I'm not no, I don't think I'm a weirdo. Maybe I am. Yeah. But I broke the ground, and I said, "What? Well, he says it's cursed. He has been cursed for a long time. In fact, cursed is the ground." Man, she was wow. good. She was delivered just like that. Done. Wow. Done. Done. Man, it was a strip suit. And I'll tell you what, Doc, I've never seen. You ever seen a little 12, 13 year old girl, 13 year old girl, man, I like big rags. 
Boy, that's why I didn't want to touch her. So come back to this one. <laughs> it was scary, wasn't it? Was Ooh, I'm telling you why. So she would help herself. So we get to focus, amen? She's focused on herself. So, you know, get to focusing on the Lord Jesus for yourself. Get to focusing on the Lord Jesus for others. Get to focusing on the Lord Jesus for the church. Get to focusing on the Lord Jesus for the praise team. Get to focusing on the Lord Jesus, amen? we we got to get back. we got to get back. This world has got too much for our children and all that stuff, and it's crept on in the door. The next thing you know, everybody's clapping because there's tons of numbers. Man, Lord Jesus, forgive us. Forgive us, God. Forgive us. Let us focus on you and let you build the house. Amen. What do you think about that? That makes sense. I'm going to tell you, I've been guilty of that. Even my younger preaching days, i got to focus on the message. I'm going to tell you, if you do that, Daniel, you're stupid. I, I, I can get that. I've been stupid. <laughs> Amen. You focus on him. Let him give you the message. Amen. You don't do. You never do that. And you know, Bob, with the songs, they, 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 they get better and better. Praise God all the time. You focus on Jesus. You don't focus on them songs. Now, Kyle, you play a guitar. You don't focus on that. You focus on Jesus. Amen. And I'll tell you, we'll all be okay if we get that right. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's a good place for an amen. amen. I'll have to say more. <laughs> Sure. So, focus on Jesus. That's for sure. Focus on Jesus. But you know, we also got something called fire. Focus on fire. In fact, you got your Bibles. Turn to Exodus. Exodus chapter 3. Chapter 3, starting verse 1. Now, Moses was tending the flock, and then Jethro was father in law. In other words, he was working for his father in law. That's always a good thing, right? <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Yeah, he, was, he worked for his father in law. That's right. <laughs> The priest of Midian. In fact, he was a priest of another thing. And, and, he, and, he, and he heard, and he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There an angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire within, within, within the bush. Moses saw and, and thought the, the bush was on fire, but it did not burn up. It wasn't his soon. So Moses thought, hey, well, I, I think I, this is some strange thing. I think I'm going to go over and see this strange sight. Why the bush is not burned up? When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush. A burning bush and God's in the bush, right? Moses, Moses. He called us Moses, Moses. Boy, no, can you hear God calling him? Glenda, Glenda. Can you hear? Glenda, Glenda. No, I hear that. God called him. Boy, it's good if God gives ears to hear what he wants. Give us ears to hear you, Lord. Call my name. Call my name, Lord Jesus. Yeah. And Moses said, hey, here am I. I don't know what else to say. Here am I. Here am I. Wow. Oh, do not come closer. God said, take off your saddles. For this place where you're standing is holy ground. And he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And this Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. He was. He was. Well, I tell you, fire. You know, in the, in the midst of fire, in, in the midst of fire, it, it kills everything. It kills, it kills the spiders, the scorpions, the snakes. It kills the fleas, the ticks. It kills anything. It kills anything that can kill you. And see, the holy fire of God. When you when you baptize, and Jesus said, and, and, uh, and John actually said, he says, he says, I baptize you for a of sin. But if someone's coming greater than me, that the sandals, I'm not, I'm not worthy to tie. Uh, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit with what? Fire. Fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With fire. And when I was born again, I received some fire in me. That, you know what I mean? I mean, you're actually just kind of a zeal. But you know what fire does? It kills everything that can kill me. Holy fire that's in me can kill anything that can, that can kill me. In fact, the fire of God will kill every sin in your life if you let it. Amen. If you put it to that flame, that holy fire, just like that bush, when Moses walked up to it and it glowed and it wasn't consumed, it didn't kill the bush, it didn't tear the bush up, but anything that could hurt the bush was gone. Oh my goodness. What does that mean? And then Jesus says, I'm going to baptize you in fire. That same holy fire. That means that all the sins that I've been holding on to, I need to wait that flame, amen? Anything that can kill me, that flame can take care of. Yeah. Which two songs did you It's all Which two songs did you give? Dead. First two. Completely. Isn't that wonderful? I'm going to tell you the problem of love. It is. I'm not going to that sin never put to fire. Jesus didn't say he took you so you could keep your sin. In fact, in today's day, you want this up? You know, Jesus was right on the ground. And that lady came and there was no storm. And then they all left. He said, let the first one throw the stone. 
Who ever thought that he said, you know, I've moved to Boy Stoner? Anybody else want to ask about that? There he is, just Jesus and her. Book of John. And he says, uh, and then he, he says, daughter. Calls her daughter. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's huh? pretty good, Kimber? Daughter. Yeah. Has anyone condemned you? No, no, sir. Neither do I. Go and leave your life of what? Sin. That's what he told me. Now, see, in today's church, it's come down here to pray. Go and keep your life of sin. That's what a lot of churches are saying today. Don't worry about it. It'll be okay. Don't get the fire of God and you can destroy all the sin in your life. I hate sin. When I wasn't saved, I loved it. You did too. You know you did. I'm not bound by anything. I'm not bound by a habit of junk. Do I mess up? Yeah, mess up. In fact, I hope you all love this. I'm a saint. In fact, you look to the Bible, they never call us sinners. They call us saints. Don't they? Everyone. But I'm a saint of sins. That sounds stupid, but yeah, it does. Makes no sense to me either. I don't know why I am what I am. The Holy Fire of God takes care of that sin. He convicts me and puts me in. And he said he and he would burn that stuff. You know why? Because that sin will kill me. That sin will kill me. And God kills everything that's going to kill me. Hey, I like that. Hey, hallelujah. I like that. <laughs> no doubt about that. I like that. Right? So he brings us in. In fact, in, in, in the book of, uh, uh, of Luke, it, uh, when, when the two guys were over the baskets, he, he, you know, the, the Jesus, they were walking out, and Jesus had been crucified, and they were walking out. The next thing, oh, Jesus shows up, and they didn't recognize him. He didn't recognize him at all. In fact, they, 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 as they were walking down there, they came down to the road, and he said, you know what? Didn't, didn't, didn't our hearts burn? Didn't our hearts burn when he was opening the Scriptures to us? That's, that's what they said. Yeah. Yeah, 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 chapter 24 in the book of Luke. They, 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 Jesus, they, they're walking by him, and he's speaking to them, and their hearts are burning. Boy, the Holy Spirit being poured out in it. Being, being poured out. Burning. Burning with a zeal and a passion and, and a love for God. In fact, let me, let me, let me tell you what they said right here. They talked to some road, they opened the scriptures, and then they arose that very hour. They just went from Jerusalem down to Jericho, right? They said, listen, Jesus is dead. Let's go. Let's get out of here. And they started walking down the hill to Jericho. They got there, and after Jesus showed up and said, the table, he broke bread and disappeared, by the way. Anytime time Jesus breaks bread with you, it's a good thing. Uh, that's right. It's a good thing when he breaks bread with you. I tell you, he'll disappear right in front of your eyes if he breaks bread with you. But he's done gave you a message, amen? Amen. And next thing you know, they said, hey, we just got that Jericho, let's go back. I never made a trip like that before. I went somewhere I wanted to stay. They did right back then. They went right back. They got up and went right back. They couldn't hold it in no more. They had a zeal in the fire. They wasn't going to be extinguished or put out. Their focus was on Jesus, and their fire was about Jesus, and they were headed to back to tell people about who? About Jesus, that he was alive. In fact, if you go on reading it, it says that he rose and came to Jerusalem, returned to Jerusalem. They said the, uh, the front the, found the eleven and all that would get together saying, The Lord has risen indeed. He's alive, he's alive, he's alive. And my focus is on him, and my fire is about him, and he protects me and keeps me, and I can focus on him. And he can take care of all the things that bother me, that trouble me. Take care of all the sins of my life. And I don't have to be like this world because my focus is on him. And I don't have to fret and worry and be all messed up because my focus is on Him and my fire is all about Him. That's what this sermon's about. Focus and fire. I'm on fire for the Lord Jesus. You know, I get to preach. I've got to preach in many churches. I get to my wife to sing with me. Now, she never would do it. Kimberly, she's always ready to sing. <laughs> and that's good. You know, and I'm trying to treat you to keep my family in the ministry. And I try to bless you people. But I'm mostly, I do. But the only reason I, the only way I can do it is I focus on Jesus. There's nothing I can do for you. This old body's dying. These old bones are getting old. Yeah. My hair just fell out. I was like, I lost my hair. And they used to, this used to be real black. That's okay. My focus is on the Lord Jesus. Y'all love Jesus. Y'all think, think we need to get focused on Him. Y'all think we need to fan the flame and let that fire burn us. Yeah. You remember how when you first got saved, how it burned? Yeah. I'm going to tell you, and I, I know this church, I've been around, I love this church, you know. And I, I love many other ones that I've been privileged and great men of God I've got to uh, do. And it's been amazing. I, I, I can't believe uh, the places I've been, the things I've seen, and the things that's happened to me. But it's all because of Him. 
Let's see where we go. I have no, but in the name of Jesus, walk. <laughs> Jesus is ready. He's coming back. Y'all know he's coming back? Yeah. It'd be good if we're found doing our master's business. Uh, it'd be good if we're, we're zealous for the Lord and full of that holy fire. Wouldn't it be good for that? That our focus is on Him. They don't come to me and say, "Put you were trying to get a beer house. Uh, I just want more of you. Oh, but you were trying to get a little more money to make. No, no, I just want more of you, Lord. Oh, you're trying to raise more kids and take care of all the things around the world. I just love you, Lord. No, you're trying to build a bigger child in church and have many, many people. No, I just love you. Oh, you're worried about your wife and your kids. Yes, I am, but I love you, Lord. Focus on the Lord Jesus. What do I say? You know, if you've been off the road, focus you've been somewhere. God will give you know that. And I know you know people that need to get focused on religious junk, academia. I know something the Bible says to work on it. I know the man that wrote it. <laughs> I know the plan of salvation. What is it? I know the man of salvation. You know, we don't need to know all this stuff. We just need to know him. Maybe. If you don't know him today, you can know him. You can know him fully, holy, completely. You can be filled with a brand new fire. You can have a new focus in your life so that you ain't out running off stuff and wearing yourself, wearing the devil. If he gets you doing something, even a religious thing, he will wear you out. And he'll leave you dry, ball dry, empty, and discouraged. Don't you let that devil do that to you. God is calling today for his people to rise up and renew their focus. If you want that, you can have it today. What do you think about that? Yes. I think you can have it today. That's right. Play a little music there, Kyle. If anybody wants to come along, we just want to spend a little time in prayer. And if you've got some focus that you've been messed up on, come on, I'll pray for you. If you did, my wife will pray for you. It's done. So everybody head bow, every eye closed. That's what we like to do it around here, you know. Yeah. If anybody here wants it all, just come to the altar's open and Jesus is calling. If you've been messing up and goofing up, he is ready for to hear your plea. You hear that? He's ready to hear your plea that you're ready to refocus your life, that you're ready to be filled with that fire again. Praise the Lord.